I am joined now on the couch by Kim Smith of Adventures in Coaching to share with us some more advice on how to improve our careers. So welcome to the show, Kim. Thanks so much, Ben. It's great to be back. Well, it's great to have you again with some more fantastic advice for us. So Thanks. last time you were on, we were talking a little bit about teams and mm -hmm. how to kind of get teams oriented a little bit and help them succeed. But we're shifting gears a little bit once more to talk about problems. <laughs> so we encounter problems in our careers all the time, but they don't necessarily need to be a bad thing, do they? Not necessarily, although I think a lot of people think they are, right? Oh gosh, the problems are so difficult or, or insurmountable, how do I get over them? Yeah, I mean, it certainly can be a thing, but a lot of problems can present us with opportunities too, right? Yes. They force us to make change, mm -hmm. and there's always a way to come out with some positive change. Exactly, if you have that mindset, which is what we're gonna be talking about today, is really how do we shift that, you know, oh, this is such a big problem and I don't know what to do, and therefore we get stuck often when we're in that problem versus looking at something as an opportunity and reframing it as that. I just love this topic because so many of us, whether we're in business or whether it's our personal lives, we can take a look at you know, anything from this new framework. Well, and even if it's not necessarily a problem, it can still be an overwhelming task. So right. in the event that you are facing with a monumental issue, a big problem, how do you recommend starting to tackle something like that? Yeah, that's, that's the issue, isn't it? So, um, and I like to say, rather than issues or problems, I like to say challenges, actually. If you can start reframing it by looking at as, it as a challenge, it no longer has such a negative connotation. And then when you start asking yourself, well, hey, you know, is there another way to look at this? What is the opportunity? And oftentimes we really can't, we're so used to being in that problem and maybe even you know, down about it or maybe even in that place where we're sort of like have this victim thinking where, oh, poor me, I can't do anything about this. Sometimes it's hard to start looking at things as opportunities and that is where maybe where a coach can come in or you can get feedback from others. Like what's another angle here? So if we're trying to change that mindset mm -hmm. from, oh my God, this problem is so big, how am I gonna get started to tackle it, to, all right, this challenge that's facing me is gonna give me an opportunity to really improve my situation or improve my position at work, how would you recommend getting to that point where we're seeing something differently? Yeah, well, it really is a multi-step process, and you just outlined a bunch of them right there, so you're totally getting this. It's awesome. So, you know, looking at the problem or the challenge and then thinking about it as an opportunity and then maybe thinking, like, what are the solutions? Like, what is it that I need to do to create this opportunity, to create the, the solution? Um, and then thinking about what might be different once you're in that solution. So that's a way to kind of look at it pretty far forward into, I don't know, the future. I mean, it may be only one conversation away, but thinking about the difference can really help to um, motivate you to kind of continue looking at pushing through the problem and maybe getting out of your com comfort zone a bit to ask for what you need, or maybe it's setting a boundary or coming up with some n new ideas and presenting it to a leadership team. So you're recommending a little bit of like trying to see our challenge through to the end and use that success as inspiration to help us work through. Yes, absolutely. And I, and I highly recommend writing these things down so that you can go back and check in and have an accountability partner. You know, maybe it's a friend or coworker, um, a manager, uh, a coach, you know, it, it just depends. But having somebody that can help you kind of think through the obstacles that might be in the way, the roadblocks that are getting in your way from being successful and creating an opportunity from a challenge. So as a professional coach, if I was facing a huge project and I just I wasn't quite sure where to start and it was really like just the scope of the whole thing, I wasn't, wasn't figuring out where to begin and if I was you know, excited about the end of the project, but that's just the hurdle of the project itself, yeah. how would you as a coach kind of help me through that first step of getting the inertia needed 
to right. begin oh my surmounting gosh. that that's challenge. Just such, yeah, that's great insight that you have there because it is about, you know, figuring out how to take those first baby steps. And me as a coach, I don't always know what your first baby steps are, but I'm going to work with you to try and pull those out of you and then help you to take those and give you the courage, encourage you and empower you to take those steps so that you can walk through that fear. And if that fear is insurmountable, like you were talking about, like you just, you know, you know you want to get to the end of the project, but you don't know how, then we talk about that fear and what that limiting belief might be that's holding you back from taking those first steps. And often if we just start taking one little step, another one will become clear as we get there. But, you know, also having a roadmap is very important. You know, it doesn't mean that you have to stay on that exact path the whole way. But sort of having an idea of like, okay, I do this first. Maybe I need to get a little more experience over here or some education over there. But then I can take that next step. Well, and those roadmaps, they don't have to be every single step mm -mm. A to Z, right? It can be A and F and yeah. maybe G and E and a couple together. But like... Sometimes we just need to get started to kind of right. figure out what some of those steps are. Yeah. So how would you recommend kind of facing those limiting beliefs and some of that fear if you've got a decent plan, but you don't have every single step of the process worked out? Right. And that can definitely leave some people feeling nervous. Yeah, a lot of us like to have the answers before we start something, which I call like the problem with perfectionism. And sometimes we hold on to like, I'm not gonna do anything until the plan is perfect, until I have it all figured out. You know, I'm not willing to go A to F, right? I'm, I wanna go A, B, C, D. So it's that, yeah, it's the problem with perfectionism. And can you let yourself, you know, off the hook a little bit and say like, it's gonna be good enough. Even if I just take these few steps, maybe I'll run into some more roadblocks and maybe it won't be right. Maybe I'll make a mistake, but that's okay. Because half the fun of the journey is kind of going off trail, right? And maybe like, oh gosh, I'm a little bit lost. And then you find your way back again. Think how good you feel once you've maybe done a little diversion and found something you weren't expecting. Well, and it's hard to learn without those little diversions, mm -hmm. and those extra challenges too. I mean, I, right. something that I've always faced in my life is I am cripplingly perfectionist. Like I am <laughs> That's why you smiled when I said that. People. Exactly. I am 100% one of those people mm -hmm. who I have to drill it into myself to not let perfect be the enemy of mm -hmm. the good. Yeah. And there's so many times it's like, man, I'm not quite sure this will be perfect. I got to start anyway. I just got to do it anyway. And it sounds to me like reaching out to you is a great way to kind of yeah. help bridge that gap and help get a little bit of outside motivation and outside help if we're really having a hard time exactly. getting over that little bit of a hump, that little bit of a limiting belief. Right, so, and that little bit of limiting belief might end up being a bigger limiting belief that's affecting you in a lot of different places and a coach can help you to uncover what that is and to come up with plans so that when you hear that limiting belief talking to you, you know, you can be like, oh, there it is. Rather than sit in procrastination or sit in, you know, feeling down about something. Like, oh, there it is. Now here's, here's what I need to do. To help identify that voice in right. your own head and tell it to be quiet when it needs to be. Right. Thank you very much. But um, we're moving forward. <laughs> right. So if anybody needs some help finding out their limiting beliefs mm -hmm. or helping to get over them a little bit, how can they reach out to you? So I can be reached at Kim at adventuresandcoaching.com or just go to my website, adventuresandcoaching.com, and I have a little form that you can fill out and send me more information about what you're looking for and what your challenges and what you think your opportunities might be. So love to hear from you. Well, fantastic. Kim Smith of Adventures and Coaching, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Beth. And we'll be right back after a short break with a little bit more show for you right after this.